Hi, I'm Big Sis, and you're watching Real Black. We're on the red carpet at the screening of the film Pride in Philadelphia. A degree in mathematics. We don't have enough work for you college boys. <laughs> just give me whatever you got right now. I'm, I'm just trying to find a job. Well, I'll tell you what, the easy part was the script that Kevin and I wrote. That was the easy part. That took about six months. And then it took about four and a half years to get it sold. People said that African-American movies don't sell. They don't make money. We don't want to touch it. And it just took just not, not you know, giving in to the people who say no all the time. This is my first time on the red carpet. I went to Sundance this year as well for a film I did called Weapons with uh, Nick Cannon and Paul Dano. And they had a red carpet there, but it wasn't as um, extravagant, I think. It was a little bit smaller. I'm having a great time, and it's overwhelming, but it's good. <laughs> Play a boy with a speech impediment who ends up having a big break, you know, and, and learning to have pride in what he does. Don't, don't some of those rec, rec centers have uh, swimming tournaments and stuff? The only connection I have is really being here when I was younger when my mom performed. And, you know, even when I told her I was coming out here, she was excited. She was like, I wish I could come because it's so great out there. And, it's, you know, you can tell it's a, it's a loving spirit out here. And even Terrence says he loves it out here. I know Terrence lives out here. I know who your mom is. You want to tell about your mom? Um, all I can say is that she's inspired me. I love her. And I'm more and more now watching her career and learning from it. And her name is Diana Ross. <laughs> The exciting thing was, I mean, honestly, waking up every morning knowing that I was contributing to something that was so powerful and so inspiring and heartfelt. That was the honor and thing for me to do. But um, the training was hard work. There was no fun in, in, in glitz and gold in that. It was, you know, two practices a day for two and a half hours, five days a week for a month. So that's a lot of hard work. But at the end of the day, it's all worth it. Brother Clifton, <laughs> this brother, this is the, this is the man right here. This, look, do y'all know who this is? You play a villain in this movie, so do you like playing a villain? Girl, say hi to the bad guy. I love playing the villain. I mean, lately that's been my string of things. I mean, from Diary of a Mad Black Woman to Daddy's Little Girls to here, that's all I'm doing these days. When I played the victim on America's Most Wanted, nobody remembered me. So now the villain thing, people seem to know who I am now. So I'll just say hi to the bad guy. I want to say hi to some My name is Sunu Ganera. I'm the director of Pride. What's it feel like? This must be very exciting for you to have a film and uh, this film come to life. I think it's it's a dream come true. I mean, it's uh, 15 months ago, my wife and I left South Africa to come over here to make this film. And just to see all these people and to see this film come to life and Jim Ellis's life come, you know, come to be I think for me is, is really special. Can you tell us about your feelings about this film and Jim Ellis? This film is very special to us in a number of different ways. It characterizes the life of a city employee who was in the recreation department uh, who did a wonderful job but who, who traditionally don't get very much attention and you know, every now and then justice will happen and, and somebody will pay attention and Jim deserves everything that he gets here. Uh, anytime your city and your state are in a movie, that's great. But the best thing about this film is that it tells a great American story. I want to say hi. Watch the movie, it's very good. It's very good, and Terrence Howard is very sexy. Bernie Mac is too. Got a crazy eye, but he's very sexy. with Real Black. You exist. Yes, I am. What's up, baby? <laughs> you had the best line in the whole movie when you Which said one? that Jim, where I come from, we swim naked. And I want him best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's my background. We didn't have Speedos. Oh, my God. It was un I mean, uh, when I was swimming in the 70s, it was unsanitated for you to swim in a swimming pool because you had all the different classes afterwards. So it was, it was not sanitary. So you had to swim naked. And it was awkward, but after a while you got used to it. It was boys and girls? No, they wouldn't have to just do it together. We didn't have core head. The girls had that, but all the, the boys, we swam together, and we had to swim naked. And what message do you want children and kids, the youth, to get from this film? Well, one thing I want to do, and not just to them, but to Hollywood too, that you have to give something up about yourself. 
that's myself included. This, this film was done for a little or nothing because we had to do something of substance. We had to do something of quality. We have to stop belittling, or we're not going to never get any good scripts. We're not going to get any good directors. Soon on for South Africa, he, he did he worked for nothing, just to prove himself. And that's something that is just put on the back burner, because everyone always looking for money, looking for a dollar. Everything is not a dollar. And that's one reason I'm glad to be a part of it, because it's a good film. This film makes sense. It has a story. This story needs to be told. It's not something that's just over the top or something just to, you know, just to be beating each other up all the time, signifying or playing the dozens. I don't want to do that. That's easy. You know, I'm an actor.